Welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I am Alan. It's a Monday and I was supposed to clean the house today, but I couldn't face it, so I made a video instead. So we're going to play with cameras and sharp objects today. So the main reason that I'm doing this video is because I didn't want to vacuum the house because that's when I find disturbing things under the furniture. I just wasn't in the mood for it today. So I thought instead we'd do a fun video. We've been working so hard lately on, on a lot of uh, high powered photographic stuff and it's only gonna get more uh, hair raising as we get into the extreme macro thing. So I thought it would be nice to, to slow things down, get a change of pace and do something fun. This is not an especially difficult project, but it does involve quite a bit of um, uh, post work uh, in Photoshop or whatever kind of uh, editing program you use. And uh, there's a fair amount of detail in, in this particular project that we need to pay attention to if we're going to pull the picture off. Um, I have, have I ever mentioned to you about my juggling skills? Like world class um, champion, championship juggler. Um, I am not. I'm not one of those. Um, I don't even know if they exist. Uh, but I can't juggle. But I thought I'd take a picture of me juggling anyway. <laughs> it's because Peter McKinnon can do that kind of stuff. I just thought it was time to put him in his place. So what I want to do is take a photograph of me juggling. Then I want to take a photograph of the naked stage with nothing going on. So they're the first two images that, that I want to get. First thing I do is make sure that the space is the way I want it. There's nothing in the, the scene that I don't want in here. I'm not concerned about the lights right now. I just want to make sure I've got the space. The second thing I do is decide on a focal plane and set that and leave it. So what I do is I put the camera in manual. I'll, I'll come to where I intend to stand and I put a, a piece of black gorilla tape on the floor. Then I will use one of these things. I'll put this right where I'm gonna be and I'll push this right into my eye with my eye closed. I wipe these thoroughly since picking them up at the thrift shop. And then I'll pop over to the camera I'll focus manually on the part that was touching my eye, then I'll leave the, the camera alone. The next thing is setting up the lights. Now, for this, for this particular shoot, I wanted a very specific kind of light. I wanted a single light, a single Paul C. Buff uh, Einstein set at about one half power with a medium sized honeycomb grid. The reason I'm using that is it throws a pretty tight ball of light, casting uh, a well-defined shadow behind me. So I eventually decided on head height, 30 degrees off the camera line. And uh, I took several pictures until I was happy with the exposure. So the first thing that I do is once everything is set up, is I take several pictures without anything in the frame. These come in handy um, as we're going through the compositing. There will be times when you want a copy of the background that doesn't have anything in it so that you can layer that in and cover up stuff that you don't want to see. Then I took all the photographs I thought I would need of me pretending to be a juggler. Uh, after that, without changing anything else at all, it was time to photograph the pointy objects. So let me show you how we do that. I took, I took a monopod. It's my, it's my birding monopod. It's a big old long, it's like one leg of a tripod, really nifty. 
This is uh, a Manfrotto bendy arm. This is the most expensive bendy arm I own, and it is really stiff, which is good. I put a super clamp on the end of it, and I took a length of fishing line. This is not ordinary fishing line. God knows what kind of fish people catch with this because it's got steel in the inside of it. No fish I've ever caught would need this stuff. It's hard to cut with pliers. Anyway, I took a short length of this and balled it up and put it in the jaws of the, of the uh, clamp and put my whole weight on it to make sure that wasn't gonna come off. And then left the other piece dangling. And then it was just a matter of, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do the butcher's knife again. That was, that was stressful. Um, say the, the flashlight. All I do is, is tie a knot. This is all going to come out in Photoshop. I'll be getting rid of all of the, everywhere the, the line shows up. So once I've got my object firmly secured, lights on, cameras on, cameras pre-focused, Okay, and it's working. So what I'll do is I'll take my fishing pole and my remote. I'll position myself right where I was standing. And the idea is to position the object where I think it would be. And take a bunch of photographs. It, it's that simple. So I took probably half a dozen photographs of all of the separate objects, all tied on my bendy arm. First thing I'm gonna do is import all these photographs into Lightroom and select the ones that we wanna work with. And then I'll take all those into Photoshop and that's where we'll be next. So join me in my office, if you will. Sorry for interrupting, but it is the next day um, I learned something valuable last night uh, that you should not format your memory cards until after you've downloaded the pictures onto your computer. That's a pro tip for free. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. That's why I'm wearing a different shirt and I look about a day older. Is um, Yeah, I lost all the pictures. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't a wedding or somebody was paying me to do it. I did change a couple of things. All I did was move the uh, camera a little bit closer. I put a wider lens on it, uh, 18 to 35, and I'm shooting at about 20, I think. And I moved my studio light down here to the front. I took the grid off and replaced it with a piece of um, orange gel. It's very, very light. I just didn't like the, the glaring whiteness of the light. Instead of using my fishing rod uh, uh, thing hanger, I'm using a C-stand just to free up a hand. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. I've selected the four images I like best. I'm juggling with just four objects uh, in this. And um, I have done a little bit of editing in Lightroom, just a little. I've cropped all the images to get as much of the, the, the light stands and the string out of the images as possible. And then I also chose the ones that uh, had the best sharpest shadows and showed the objects as clearly as possible. You'll notice that I'm in several of these photographs, uh, even though <clears throat> I shot a lot of these without me, it doesn't really matter that I'm here. It's just I wanted to make sure as I was shooting it that the objects were in, a, in as close to the position I want them to end up in as possible. When you start having to, to move objects around in the, uh, in the image, it leaves some telltale signs behind. So I wanted to make sure that, that all of the objects were as close to where I want them to be as possible. Uh, the second image um, was a wine glass. And my position has changed, but as you'll see, all I'm gonna use is the wine glass. 
And uh, if you look close, you can you have to really look close, but you can see the string, uh, the fishing line that I'm dangling it from, and almost a hint of a shadow of that, but we'll get to that in Photoshop. The third image was a one of my wife's statues. I don't think she would have been happy about this. There's the string that we'll have to get rid of. And there's the little priceless artifact floating in midair. The last one, oh, was a camera. Now, I looked at videos of people juggling, and at some point they have to throw one thing from one hand into the other. So I thought we could really improve the believability of this if we had an object going from one hand to the other and the shadow falling on me. So this is probably the picture that I'll use. We'll definitely have to get rid of the, the string. And there's something in my left nostril, which I'll also be getting rid of, but I won't be showing you that. This thing on the wall is a picture hanger. It's in all the images. That'll be easy to get rid of. And um, you'll notice that I swapped out my uh, bendy arm stick uh, to use a C-stand uh, with a long extension on it, uh, in allowing me to position these objects with me in the image. Um, it just uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Now, if we're going to use this image of me, we've got to get rid of this, and I'll show you how we do that. Fortunately, we've got other pictures that have this area completely free, but lit with the identical lighting. Okay, so we picked all four of these images. What we're going to do now is select them all, right click, and go to Edit In, and then Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I have all four images appearing as separate layers. Now, the first thing we need to do is decide which is going to be our base layer that we're going to do all of the other editing on top of. And I'm going to choose this last image. Um, let me shut the other images off so that you can see the one we're going to keep. I'm keeping this because the camera is in the best position right here. And this would be the hardest uh, the hardest subject to move in front of me like this. So I'm going to use it the way it is. What you want to do when you're taking pictures for a composite is get as much of the work done as you possibly can in the camera. Because once you get into Photoshop and start making adjustments, you can leave behind telltale signs uh, of where something has been moved. Uh, so it's best, if possible, to photograph the objects where you want them. And uh, the compositing is much easier if you do that. Obviously, we're going to have to remove this, this bar and this shadow, but I'm not worried about that because really the only piece I'm concerned about is this. We could get rid of the, the strings and the poles now, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do the bulk of the work first, and then we'll come back and do that. So the other three layers above the base layer, we're going to go into those one at a time, reduce the opacity to get a feel for where other things might be in the way. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask that is going to cover everything in this image, and then we will uncover what we want. If that, if you're not doing a lot of uh, Photoshop work, some of this may be uh, a little bit strange, but follow along and, and you'll see. So what we're going to do in this case is add a mask, which would normally involve clicking this, um, this icon at the bottom, add layer mask. But if you hold Alt when you, when you hit it, it will give you a black mask. So that covers up everything on this layer. And the only way that we can uncover it is by using a, uh, a brush with white paint on it, which is what we're going to do. We'll hit B for brush. That activates the brush. Uh, we need to switch the, the uh, palette around. So if you hit the, uh, the X key, that'll put the white in the front. So now I have a white brush. And anywhere I paint, on this mask, not on the picture, but on the mask, will 
allow us to see through, uh, see through that um, area and uncover what's underneath. Now, I believe it was right here that, that she was. So what I'm going to do is just um, with a low opacity at first, paint a little bit of white in this area to start to uncover. There she is. There we go. Now, the, the reason I'm... I'm using a low opacity as I I want to see what it's doing to the to the area behind it. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good feel now for how that's going to be. We need to find the shadow. If you want to if you want to turn off the 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 mask just for a second, um you can disable the layer mask by right clicking and that'll show us where the 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 um, shadow is. So we'll undo that, enable it, and then paint the shadow in. I'm going to increase the opacity. That just means my white paint is going to go on quicker. Now see how because I shot this it, with identical lighting and camera settings, This is this is falling on the wall of the last picture without any artifact around it. So it's very good. Let's go up to 100% just um, for speed's sake. So that removes all of the mask that was covering that up. Let's finish by cleaning her up too. There we go as we uh, bring the opacity of this layer back up to full we can see that we've got a really nice representation of the uh, of the statue just floating there now as we look in close you can see the string now while we're here we can get rid of that just by decreasing the size of our brush switching to a hard brush i had it on a soft brush soft brush so we'll put it to a harder brush and while we're still on the layer mask, I'm gonna paint the black back in to hide this. So all I have to do is press the X key. We'll have to close that first. Press the X key and that will switch my palette back over again. Now I have a black brush and all I have to do is paint the mask back. Just like so. We'll get rid of this with a different tool in, well, I'll tell you what, while we're here, if if you want to do something to the image, to the part that the mask is showing us, you need to switch to the image rather than trying to do this on the mask. So once we're now on the image, I could go to a tool like um, the Spot Healing Brush, again, make it a, the brush a little bit smaller and just by painting on it, the computer senses that that little bit doesn't match the rest. It's painted some hair in there, though. There we go. And that's the, the string completely removed while we're there. Okay, brilliant. We don't need this layer anymore. We can turn it back off. We can zoom back out. And if we turn that layer on, we should have her right there perfect okay let's switch to the to the next layer once again we'll lower the opacity just a little bit good that looks fine all right we're going to do this we're going to do the same thing now with with the glass i'll hit alt and add a mask i'll switch to a white brush by hitting the x key so that's the shadow. All right, now we've got a problem here because I'm painting with um, I'm painting with 100% opacity. I'm going to undo that by hitting the by hitting the um, Control Z or Z as we call it. I'm going to drop the opacity down and and start on the the glass first. 
And I'm also going to use a soft brush. That was part of the problem. I had a, a very hard brush. I want a very soft brush. Let's try that again. I think it was right here. That's better. That's better. Yes, that, that um, hard brush was leaving a very obvious change in the color of the wall. Glass is hard to work with, but this is looking great. Now, there are other tools that we could use to, to bring this picture in. We could use the blend if function, but I'll tell you what, we're not going to, we're not going to do that today. That's a, um, that's a whole different layer of complexity. Let's find our shadow. Same thing, just painting where it should be and letting it come in. The, the glass is acting as a prism. That's what this hot spot is. That's not something we need to remove. That actually is going to make this whole thing look more believable. You can see where the, the brighter light is, is coming through the stem of the glass here. I think actually that looks great just the way it is. All right, that looks good. But let's use the same trick we just used before to um, get rid of the string that's holding the glass up. Most of it isn't showing up because remember, we have a mask covering it up, so we don't have to worry about that. But here's a piece that I painted over. It's very faint, but uh, there is one piece of string that we can see. So what I'm going to do is make my brush a bit smaller, make sure I'm clicked on the mask, switch the, the uh, palette to, to black uh, as the uh, foreground color, and then just replace the mask that was in there. I don't know what that is. That might be on the wall, in which case doing this won't get rid of it. I can't see the string there. So I'm going to say that we're done with that. Okay, now we have two objects floating in space. Let's turn that other layer on. Good. And um, let's add our last layer. So we'll turn it on, activate the layer, and uh, do the same thing that, that, that we did earlier. We're going to add a mask by hitting Alt and clicking the layer mask key. And um, then we're going to paint that knife back in, same way we did before. We're going to take a, a brush by hitting B. We're going to change the foreground color to white by hitting X. And we're going to make our brush a little bit bigger. And we're going to make sure it's a soft brush, low opacity for right now until we find the, the knife. I'll tell you what, let me just disable this for one second. I can't remember what the shortcut key for that is. Somebody will tell me. All right, so there it is. We'll put the layer mask back on. And then with a low opacity brush, we're just going to brush the knife back into existence by cutting a hole in the layer mask. We'll keep painting this until we get it to full color. And if I'm happy with everything, we'll turn this up to 100% and it'll go a bit quicker. Now, like I said at the beginning, there are many ways that you can do this. One of the ways, if you don't want, if you don't want to paint this back in, is you can make a selection of the knife 
uh, and apply your mask that way. A lot of people will do that, and I will do that if there was any chance that the background had changed, uh, if I needed to actually cut the knife out of the photograph, but I don't because it was actually photographed in this position. So um, as long as the camera hasn't moved and the light hasn't moved, I want this exactly where it was in the photograph. So we don't need to, to make a selection. But if we wanted to, there's a, a new selection tool um, out now added with the last edition. We could let Photoshop take the make the selection for us like that and then we could uh, apply a mask using this selection but we're not going to so command d to get rid of the selection and let's find the shadow so now all we have to do is add a hole in the layer mask where the shadow is which is right about here i'm using a lower opacity just to to start out to see where it's going and a soft brush and um, let's just start painting the shadow in. It looks like it's doing well so I'm going to turn the opacity up, paint with a, a little whiter of a brush so that the shadow will uh, be exposed more quickly. And this is very natural. This is exactly what you would expect with a single light source is that the, uh, the shadow is going to be denser in the middle with light getting diffracted around the edges. So the edges will be... Uh, this is so very difficult to, to do, um, to, to just paint in a shadow. It's extremely difficult to do and make it look uh, believable. So let's get rid of the things on the wall. There's a smudge up there I want to get rid of. And uh, we can do all of this, but we just have to make sure that we're on the right layer to do it. To get rid of the, the string on me, we need to go to the base layer. And there are several ways that we can do this. I think about the easiest way is just to remove it from this image without having to mess with the other masks. In fact, I think we'll, we'll see what happens when we use the spot healing brush tool. I generally like this thing. It didn't used to be so good, but it's great now. Uh, this only shows up in that photograph, so that's it gone. None of the others add that back in. Let's see if we can just get rid of uh, this piece of string. That worked pretty well. I recommend when you're doing this, using the healing brush tool, that that you use the smallest brush you can, uh, because you don't want to you don't want to have this make changes to other areas. Now, this is going to be covering a lot of different um, uh, parts of the image. Uh, I recommend using the healing brush against one background and separately from uh, from trying to do it all the, the whole way through. It seems to work better. If you stop at the transition point, look, I have hair. I should get rid of that while I'm here. This is more fun than using that dog clipper I've got. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's get rid of the the rest of the um, the rest of the string by hitting J, which is the uh, healing brush thingamajig. Oh my goodness, this is very unappetizing. I hope uh, I hope nobody's trying to eat their dinner while they're watching this. This is going to be considerably harder to remove. Let's get rid of the knot from the... There's a, a bit on the inside. Okay. That looks pretty good. We might 
we might try to do something to get rid of these blown out highlights in just a minute. Uh, first, to get rid of this uh, string where it crosses the hairs, the, the, the computer's going to get a bit confused by that. Uh, I think probably I'd rather use the um, clone stamp tool again. So S for the clone stamp and then Alt to take a selection and then just paint the selection in. Let's get away from my face. So the next thing we need to get rid of is this bar. This is the only place that it uh, shows up. In order to get rid of that, if we turn off the other layers like so, we could remove this and actually I think we will remove this piece of string with the healing brush tool. We could remove this with a healing brush. J for the healing brush. Let's get a bigger brush using the right brackets. If we, if we painted this, it would probably get rid of it. There's another way that we can get rid of this bar that is uh, a little bit easier, I think. Let's disable the layer mask for this layer. And this looks great. I think that we can uh, we can replace this. So let's just let's just take a white brush, a nice big white brush, a big soft white brush. Make sure it's soft. We'll start at about half the opacity. So all I'm doing here is revealing this part of the image from this layer, from the the little girl statue layer by painting white onto the, the black mask in that image. If, you, uh, if you're new to working in Photoshop, it is really worth taking the time to learn the basics. It just is, comes in so handy in so many things. Great. Okay, let's activate all the other layers. There is a uh, there's a piece of shadow right there that I don't like. That does not belong there. It looks strange. So let's go to that layer. Let's click on the mask. Let's pick a black brush this time. There you go. That's all you have to do. I just put the mask back. I tried to remove a, the piece of string there, I think. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is double check that we haven't left any string visible or shadows of string. We've still got this to deal with. I think I'm gonna use the healing brush tool for this. Need to make sure that the image is is uh, selected, not the, the mask. We should be able to just paint this off. I'm gonna fix that in just a second. Let me get the rest of this. Ah, I did not like that at all. Okay, we're gonna zoom in and uh, and deal with this a different way. I'm going to switch to the clone stamp tool, a little bit smaller. I'm going to take a, a sample by hitting the Alt key right there, and then move that edge. Yeah, that gets rid of that nasty divot. I'm going to do the same here. This metal's all about the same color. So I'll take a sample from there and cover up that There we go. That looks good. Okay, so what else do we need to get rid of? Now, what we could do is go back to the to the main image and uh, clean up any nastiness on the wall that could spoil it. Again, the 
Healing brush tool is super useful for this kind of thing. It's very quick and easy way to, to remove spots. I said I was going to see if we could uh, get rid of some of this. Um, it is a little bright. So I think what, uh, what I'll do is let's try to uh, quick select that, um, that camera. It's really just the bright part that I want and that edge. Let's refine that a little bit. So I'm just cleaning up the, the selection. So I hit OK, that will now be a selection. And I can create a copy of that selection or in its own layer by hitting Command J. Now the only thing that is on that layer by itself is the camera. And then I can, I can apply an, a, a, an adjustment to that uh, by selecting this layer, hitting the uh, adjustment button there. And I think probably um, brightness contrast should do it. There's probably more selective ways, but And we need to link this layer, by the way, to um, uh, to the layer below so that it doesn't affect anything but the layer we want it to. And that should have decreased some of the glare on it. I think it did. So let's turn everything on, see what it looks like. That is the final job. Now, if I was to do this again, I would probably move one of these objects down, um, which would be not particularly difficult to do now. There's a way we could cut this out and simply move it, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I think it's pretty decent. Okay, guys, that is our finished image. That's uh, what it looks like. And uh, yeah, other than the fact that um, Nobody in their right mind would ever do this. I think it looks fairly believable, uh, at least for a non-juggler. So let me go ahead and, and uh, flatten this image just by right-clicking and hit flatten image. That'll collect all of those layers together. Don't do this until you're finished uh, editing the picture. Click on file up at the top and save. That will save the picture uh, as a project in Photoshop, but it will also send it right back to Lightroom where we started. And here it is in Lightroom. So let's open up all four of those pictures. And let's make them a little bit bigger. So you can see we started out with all of these all of these individual images and this is what we end up with here. This is when it's best for me to stop messing around with it and uh, go do something else, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'll be back in a few days. I hope this was fun uh, and I hope you learned a little bit about how to do some of these optical tricks. If you have any questions, you know how to find me. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.